Diana told a lot of things, and I'm going to skip her some of my slides because I don't want to repeat myself, but I will maybe provide a little different approach and insight uh, uh, into issues she has been uh, talking about. Um, I'm very happy that you came here today to listen about new things uh, that you are looking for to learn a new thing, to uh, uh, uplearn already what you know, to relearn things you, you know, and to uh, make new judgments, new ideas, um, and new information which, 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 which you are going to work uh, on. Uh, if you have any questions during my presentation, please stop me. I'll be happy uh, to answer uh, them. Um, well, um, we're talking a lot about uh, digital education, digital competences, uh, what teachers need, what students need, what we want them to be. And I was very much uh, uh, happy to see all those uh, superheroes for the students, uh, but uh, mostly I'm thinking that we should uh, make teachers as superheroes because today we want them to have all possible competences and knowledge uh, in order to, to be competent, to, to provide uh, good education to students, and to have all these competences, they have to be superheroes, because uh, you cannot be my, uh, uh, expert in one topic and uh, expert uh, in all other topics they are you are supposed to have. But um, following what's going on in European level mostly, uh, we see that uh, teachers are uh, expressing their growing uh, need for uh, better knowledge about integration of ICT in education, also about uh, professional uh, training uh, and const constant, continuous professional training into uh, learn how to integrate ICT in education. And also, um, they like to change the way they receive their training. So I will uh, explore uh, and elaborate this a little bit more uh, in my further present uh, slides. I just came from Copenhagen, where was I? Where I was uh, uh, attending digital uh, Danish uh, learning festival and also the peer-to-peer -peer learning activity within the uh, working group Delta. Uh, I'm a member, and um, uh, I heard this uh, Ilka Nagel from uh, Norway. Uh, talking about teachers' professional digital competences. And this is basically what is it about. Um, we want teachers to be competent professionally, but also uh, we want them to be able to educate teachers to be uh, digital uh, today and tomorrow for, for their jobs. But let's not forget that all these digital competences we need for our work, we need as well for our life. Because today, in our life, we need as well to be digitally competent. For example, I have been using the online banking system for 20 years. And recently, they have changed the application. I cannot tell you how much time I spent to understand this new application. It took me more than 10 hours to, to understand all the features. And I'm in, in such work all the time. Imagine the other people who are not so much digitally acquainted with all things which, which, which are going on. So yes, we need to be digitally competent in everyday life, to be enabled, to enable ourselves to fully enjoy uh, our life uh, in today's society. Um, Diane already mentioned digital education plan, so I'm going to skip uh, uh, this part, but the, the this digital action plan in 2018 focus was on innovation in education systems and uh, to have um, uh, good education for our students and well-trained teachers. Um, after that, we had a forum of future of learning, and we uh, had six thematic block. Uh, the key messages from uh, this forum that lifelong learning is becoming central element in people's life, and also the role of teacher is the key in digitalization of education and training. If you remember. The, we put the student in the focus. Uh, now we are talking that we want uh, student-centered learning. The student is active participant, taking, um, uh, taking responsibility for what they learn. Uh, and um, yes, it's true, and it should be done, but uh, 
we also recognize that in order to achieve this, teacher is the is the key uh, uh, role uh, in in this process. Also, um, we find out that we should change initial teacher training and also provide continuous professional development, uh, not occasionally, but compulsory. Um, I often uh, have a question from my teachers when I say to them, you should change something in your teaching. Uh, you should try to implement uh, new technologies to see maybe you will find a better way how to explain to your students some things which are uh, not easy to understand. And they tell me, why should we change? We taught you, I won't say how many years ago, and you came up quite fine. So why, we sh why should we change something? It works well. Yeah, but the society is changing. Everything around us is changing. We do not use any more telephones with the wire and, uh, and, and, and a big, uh, uh, big uh, numbers. We have mobile phones. We do not have cars as we had 30 years ago. Uh, we do not watch programs, t television, in the way we watched tel uh, 30 years ago. Most of us use today Netflix and other, other, uh, 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 other channels and things like that. So uh, as society is changing, we cannot leave uh, education outside the change. Education should change as well as long as society. But in order to achieve that, we have to educate our teacher. We have to um, have policies which will follow this, which we have to um, recognize teachers' effort. We have to award teachers over their effort. We have to provide them the uh, environment which is also motivating for teachers to be good teacher, to be in interested to do new things. So um, in order to have digitally competent teachers, we have to have firstly motivated and digitally competent uh, teachers. Also, um, uh, education and training monitor, which is very important uh, publication by European Union, uh, and each country receives one uh, for 2019, which was presented at the second European Education Summit. And you can see the title of the summit was Teachers First, Excellence and Prestige for European Education Area. And I think it's very important that finally European Commission recognized the importance of the teachers and the teacher profession as such. This education and training summit, summit uh, focused on the teacher uh, in their monitor and some of the conclusion uh, which came up uh, in this monitor is that teacher training is necessary and it's necessary also to provide training in use and implementation of ICT in education. And you can see that uh, teacher expressed the need for training in uh, use of ICT but also uh, for training in teaching and in multilingual in multicultural and cultural environment. This is the results of uh, mobility of students, especially, and teachers. And uh, this is very important. And I'm very happy that we have Erasmus students here. So this is also a um, recognition for each institution to have a number of uh, Erasmus students to support the, this uh, mobility. But not only physical mobility. As I saw this poster, virtual mobility, which is also very important. We are not always able to travel, and virtual mobility will enable us to learn new things from our home, from our working place, but we are still not deprived from new uh, information and new things. And also, uh, this education monitor uh, stressed the importance to support teachers, especially in the pedagogical use and design of innovative pedagogical approaches. So it's not issue only of using technologies, it's issue of how to use them, how to implement, how to organize and develop these new uh, teaching uh, methods. Recently, uh, European Commission announced that they are coming with a new digital action plan, which will, which will be published in June, and I'm very uh, much aiming that they present it at the EDEM conference here in Timisoara. Uh, so these are some updates uh, recently emerged, uh, came out from, uh, from European Commission. So you can see 
The key areas or, or, or focus will be promoting digital literacy and closing digital skills gap, which is quite uh, existing still, developing digital capacities in uh, educational organizations, and also making digital learning reality for all, uh, and harvesting data, predictive analysis, and strategic foresight. On the one side, we have very advanced education institutions using already artificial intelligence, um, uh, learning analytics, uh, VR, and so on. On the other side, we have institutions which are still struggling to implement uh, basic technologies, for example, to provide in the classroom laptops and LCD projectors in order to just have PowerPoint presentations, you know? So such a diversity um, uh, should be a knowledge and also uh, uh, to see how to work on to ensure that everyone has the same possibilities. Um, recently we had in Zagreb, um, as I said, I'm a part of the European Commission Working Group on Digital Education, Teaching, Learning and Assessment. And we had a DP learning activity related to the uh, digital competences of teachers. And this peer learning activity is also one of the activity of the European Commission in preparing the new digital action plan. So I came up, I, I took out some of the key messages from this PLA. Uh, so uh, the need to focus on people. So um, often I heard that people who are preparing uh, policies, uh, how to teach, how to work on, are not actually the key people who are teaching. Uh, it is very important to engage teachers in such process, but also all other stakeholders uh, to listen, uh, the students as well, but also the other uh, educational institutions and educators. Um, also, um, we have to put focus on those, on those uh, educational institutions that are teaching teachers, that are training teachers. So, and also institutions who are providing institutions in initial teacher training. So let's see who are they, how they're working, and how can they improve their work. And as I said already, we want teachers to be digitally competent, to enable their students to become as well digitally competent. Uh, and also, we have to uh, provide the new ways of teacher training in order for teachers uh, to be skillful. Um, also, uh, Diana showed you uh, already DigiComp uh, framework for digital competences European Euro Europe uh, um, came up with, and the selfie tool. But uh, the European Union have a DigiComp digital competences for uh, citizens, but also for educators. But beside the Euro European Commission, um, and other countries, uh, other countries have developed their own. Uh, digital co competence framework. For example, Norway has a very good one uh, as well. Uh, maybe in your country you have your own digital competence framework. Uh, it doesn't have to be only one, but it's very important that if you have some kind of framework that you look at it, that you work on that, and then you try to uh, set clear goals how to make teachers competent to reach these competences which are set uh, in the framework not to leave uh, this as a paper, uh, but put it into practice. Um, so um, I'm going to skip mostly, but uh, what I think is very important that we recognize that today, um, usually young people, when they start their work, they are not in, get employed uh, the first job for their life. It's more likely they will change their job through their work life, uh, and more and more. As you can see, European Commission uh, predict that uh, today it's up to 15 to 20 different jobs in lifetime. That on content of work is changing faster. And till 2022, more than half of existing workforce will need upskilling and reskilling. And it's true, because each of you are learning some new things every day. You are upskilling yourself, you are reskilling yourself. You will maybe change your job. Uh, you will maybe uh, learn completely new things within your job, which will make some other direction. 
For example, I had to learn last year quite deeply and understand it and understand it fully how to use anti-plagiarism softwares. It looks quite easy at the first, but it's actually it's not. And it took me time to understand all these simple things in these softwares, how to do this, how to search, how to check, uh, what kind of basis, uh, everything possible, what is going on. It was not easy. I'm not so young anymore, but we still have to learn, relearn and unlearn old things to learn new things. So it's very likely that what you have heard today is going to help you in some way in your work, but what you learn tomorrow will be something new, and also you will have to integrate it in your work. It doesn't mean it has to be formal learning. It can be informal learning, something that you, that, which you will look at YouTube or at television, some course or some uh, video, or you will listen on a, on a radio, some, uh, some uh, a good uh, discussion, or someone will read uh, the story or something. Every, every bit of this information can help you in building yourself and upskilling your competencies. Also, which is what is very present today and is uh, becoming uh, uh, quite uh, normal, we are talking about robots. Uh, for me, it's still funny to see that robots are doing something, but robots in industry are quite uh, integrated for already some time. And we have to learn today we, don't, we shouldn't be afraid that robots will replace us. They will replace some uh, of the rep, uh, repetitive jobs. But we have to learn how to work with robots in order to enhance their efficiency, in order to enhance uh, uh, what we want to achieve with this task. And all, I will skip this slide because Diana has already said, but um, I just wanted to put out that uh, digital, uh, uh, this Digicomp Edu framework has six parts at the moment. But recently, Europe European Commission found out or decided that the seventh uh, part should be added, and this is open education part. So they are working now how to integrate uh, this open education part in the Digicomp Edu. And um, I think it's very important because uh, when we talk about open education, openness, open access, it doesn't mean that we are doing this uh, only at our work. With using open education resources, uh, open data, uh, uh, giving things uh, to others in open access, uh, we are also changing ourselves, our culture, our way of thinking, what is open, what is closed, how as a society, are we open to something, or how are we closed? Uh, there's lots of potentials of open education, so I'm not going to talk in details about this because I'm certain that you already know most of this. Um, but what usually we focus on is open education resources and open educational practices. I would put emphasis on open educational practices because what you do with open education resources, how you use them, how you prepare them, is that is in, in a way enabling you to change the teaching methods, to uh, incorporate new pedagogical practices. And Diana showed you very well uh, some examples of open educational practices where students are developing open educational resources. But still, why are educators reluctant in use of OER? I can tell you from my own uh, experience working in teacher at the University of Zagreb in, in universities in Croatia. Although we provide lots of information about what is open education, what is OER, we have uh, the online course, open online course on that. Uh, we organize uh, uh, events, we disseminate information. Still, they need more information. They, they, um, lacking enough information to be able to start uh, to, to see the benefits, uh, how, what is it, OER. Also, they like to uh, need training in production and reuse OER. So when I say to them, okay, are you using OER in your work? And they say, yes. And I say, how do you use it? We just take something from the internet. It's open there. But they said, did you look at the license? Did you look 
Is it really open? And what is it? Should we? Why? It's there. Well, this is showing that they still do not understand the, 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 the rules how to use something. Or when you prepare your slides for the course and you think, say, okay, I'm going to put these slides online so everyone can use them. If you do not put some kind of CC license usually, then these slides are not open. But teachers do not know that. They think they're doing good work, but actually they didn't do it. So more training, uh, more talk about that. Also, um, how to reorganize their teaching with use of open educational resources. Uh, it's not easy, so they also need support in that. Also need support on an institutional level through policies, mechanisms, and things like that. And also they need infrastructure. But in the end, for all their work, they need recognition and rewarding. Because um, still, I don't know how it's a new country, but in Croatia we still have the issue that we like teachers to change, we like them to use digital technologies, to be innovative, to motivate students uh, that their teaching is uh, very good. At the same time, we didn't change their workload, existing workload. We just want them to add to their existing workload uh, the new, new things. And also, as I'm coming from the more research-oriented universities, we uh, appreciate much more research than teaching, so everything which is related to the teacher advancement is basically related to their research. What they do in the teaching is very welcome, but it's not recognized or rewarded. And while we have such situation, it's very difficult to demand from teachers to be better teachers if they do not appreciate uh, uh, their workload in this way. So um, I'll skip that, but I'll just mention that uh, regarding open education, the European Commission has provided a quite a number of documents and things from opening education and open education framework, and also uh, they have uh, provided um, policy recommendation in going open and also case studies on policy approaches to open education. And last year, they prepared practical guideline, guidelines for open educa education for academics. I would strongly recommend to look at this document because it gives you really clearly how to uh, do open education. So it's not just a theory, but concrete, uh, concrete in details uh, based on the framework, on open education framework, what and how can you do that. And now I'll focus much more on teachers and e-learning um, because, uh, as I said, I work every day with teachers and help them uh, to implement e-learning technologies. And um, based of, on that, um, we did the research in 2018 to find out what is the attitude of teachers towards e-learning and what digital competences they need uh, in order to apply e-learning in a quality manner in educational process, and uh, how much lack of possession of digital competences influence teacher readiness, as well as their motivation to integrate new technologies into the educational process. Um, and so we had a target group, was teachers at the University of Zagreb, and it was online questionnaire with questions, and you can see they were set in three, they were in three sets from teacher attitude towards in technology support and training. And we had uh, 474 teachers participated in the survey. And basically the results are this. Um, teacher has a positive attitude towards ICT and e-learning and believe it's important and can significantly contribute to education quality improvement. Um, then uh, they believe that the state at their institution is, is good or extremely good to applicate e-learning and that condition, meaning the infrastructure uh, at their education is good and or very good. So if you look at this first uh, results, everything is I ideal. Um, when we ask them how uh, yeah, they are using e-learning in their teaching. Uh, they say mostly as the classroom aid and as a blended learning. Uh, so um, 
the University of Zagreb is campus-based university. So uh, we implemented e-learning in 2007 systematically uh, in a way that we want a blended mode. So we didn't aim for fully online. We want our students to come to the campus, but uh, we also want that uh, e-learning is part of uh, uh, educational process and that it improves the quality of uh, education. But uh, when we ask them for what they are using, so how they are using uh, e-learning, so to set up the content online and to do distribute teaching materials, to uh, provide information about the course and during the course, for communication, smaller, very small part of them for evaluation and grading students' work, and to provide students on their progress, uh, feedback on their progress. So basically this is, um, making repositories uh, with the uh, communication and sharing information. What we actually want student, uh, teachers to do uh, as we want to move to this uh, approach where student, uh, student sent learning is evaluation and feedback. And this is still um, uh, not so uh, developed. Um, when we ask teachers why do not, they do not have the e-learning component in their courses, uh, it's smaller part of those teachers who participated in the survey, so only 15%. The majority of them said it's lack of time. And then that their work is uh, not evaluated in e-learning, that e-learning is not relevant to the courses, and that they are not sure e-learning uh, can improve the quality of teaching. Uh, so a lack of time is, uh, I would say, in all uh, researches uh, on European, but on a global level as well, the uh, the issue which is most present, lack of time. Because what I already said to you, we didn't change the existing workload; we just added new new things. And uh, as teachers are uh, teaching, they are also mentors to PhD students. They are also managers organizing their course and students. They have lots of uh, roles, uh, and it's very difficult to find time to learn uh, new things. Uh, and so the lack of time is mostly, uh, dominantly, the reason. When we ask them how can they be encouraged to start use e-learning, they said it's available a systematic support, recognition of their effort in innovativeness in teaching, availability of professional trainings in application of new technologies, examples of good practice, and if institution decides that e-learning is compulsory. This is interesting. So let's leave all the behind. Uh, the lack of time, the lack of support, the lack of training. But if institution said we have to do it, they will do it mostly. Uh, the competences teachers identify uh, they need uh, to efficiently implement e-learning. Uh, as you can see, computer literacy is uh, the basic one, uh, the, the highest uh, number. Then uh, use of e-learning technologies. Uh, uh, and uh, what is also very interesting, um, learning outcomes. We have lots of lots of uh, talk with teachers about how to define and clearly write learning outcomes. It's not an uh, easy thing. Uh, it's something which came out with Bologna process. And I can tell you in Croatia, we are very struggling with this Bologna. We are trying to make it uh, better than it is. But learning outcomes are not difficult to define. And teachers are not so uh, eager to define learning outcomes because actually they don't know how to do it. They need training uh, in, uh, in uh, learning how to define learning outcomes of uh, their courses. Uh, so teachers need support, uh, as already said. And uh, it's very good that we have enthusiasts who are working hard uh, and they uh, like to improve uh, learning and teaching and um, put students uh, uh, in the market with really good digital skills, a motivated, uh, um, good future learners with lifelong learning skills. But basically, enthusiasm cannot last forever. 
if we want to change things, uh, then we have to do changes um, on the whole level. So we cannot ask only teachers to change. We have to ask the management to uh, provide policies, to actively, actively participate in this process, to support teachers, the administrative staff also to be educated to support teachers uh, in, in uh, you know, teaching uh, in a new way. We have to have uh, policies on a national level, the strategies, how to uh, encourage and uh, implement uh, digital technologies in education. Uh, let's be frank, this coronavirus has did uh, something good besides the all bad stuff. Uh, as you can see, schools in Italy are closed. And I have a colleague in Italy and I asked her what uh, his daughter doing. She is a student. And she said she's staying home and she did everything online. So now it's possible to do online. Now we are talking in Croatia that maybe we are going to close some schools because of this coronavirus. And already minister said in the case if we close, we close schools, we are moving online. So now we can do it. How can we didn't do it before coronavirus? So something good maybe come up after all. Uh, and so uh, when we ask teachers what kind of training they want, so as I said, um, they like to teach face to face in the classroom and they like their students to be patient and listen for two hours. But when they do get their own training, they don't like to teach to be taught in the same way. They like to be differently, to be more active, to have peer-to-peer -peer learning, to actually participate, participate in their training and to be it, uh, in a blended mode. So not everything face-to-face, -face, but also online. So um, as I'm also a teacher, I, I say we, we have uh, big ambitions, but we are not so much uh, eager to change. Um, and also, um, we, we teachers always like to see examples of, of good practice. It's very good because if you can see someone else who has done something similar and that is quite, quite close to your subject, you will get uh, much faster ideas how you can do it, how can you improve. And if you find support uh, from the e-learning center like Diana's or mine, where you have people who are there to support teachers, then it's much more easier because you know you can come and ask, and there will be someone who will help you uh, in dealing with this. So um, I think that the importance of the e-learning centers is very big, and uh, um, not because I'm having the one, but I think that it's something uh, that it should be available to teachers, but not only to teachers, to students as well. Although, if you ask me, I don't know what is Diana experience with students. My students are asking me only when they don't uh, give uh, homework on time. So they usually call us and see and ask us if we can help them to deal with this so they, they give homework on time. So, but we still didn't, we still didn't, uh, didn't go in their way and say, no, we're still strong. Um, yes, and then just wanted to finish as the Eden is or have organized Open Education Week this week. Uh, I have started with the webinar on Monday, Diana did too on Wednesday, and uh, today we have one more webinar. Um, Eden is very active in open uh, education, in promotion of open education, and also I'm very happy that we are coming in June to Timshwara to have our annual conference here. Uh, I encourage you to, to share your work, to uh, prepare the papers, but nevertheless to come and be participant and to see what's going on on a European and global level, to take out some good examples, some experience to, to exchange ideas with others uh, and to network. Thank you. <laughs>